we are looking for people who are new whistleblowers. And let me give you a little bit about what we need. We are not interested, first of all, in second and third, third hand sources. Unless the second or third hand source has documents or materiel from a secret lab, government or corporate, that would be dispositive. Then we want that. Um, but as far as whistleblowers themselves, witnesses, we want them people who are firsthand. They need to be able to corroborate to the extent possible who they are and where they, did, where they saw what they saw. Um, we are not interested in anonymous sources. Uh, on background, perhaps, but for the purpose of disclosure, an anonymous source is of nominal value. I have 600 anonymous, anonymous sources I'm working with already. Um, but they won't go on the record. And we need people with the courage to go on the record. Uh, and I want to talk about not just the courage, but the genuine sense of patriotism. Uh, now, this word gets overused, and I'm now talking not just of nationalistic patriotism, but patriotism as a human being for their fellow humans. Uh, but even if you're talking about patriotism in your country, it is not patriotic at all to sit on secrets that are being kept away from the President of the United States or the Congress, the people's representative, when we supposedly live in a democracy and a free society. That is not patriotism. That is going along with a fascist, authoritarian, illegal operation. I want to be very clear on that. Therefore, the people who come forward are not at all violating their national security oaths, morally or legally. Now, what do I mean by that? Very quickly, and I did an entire four-hour workshop on this that you can see on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash s disclosure. This brings up this question of how did we get the first hundred or so of the military and intelligence witnesses to come forward 15 years ago this year, in fact, May 9th, 2001. Because from 1992 until 1998, I went throughout the U.S. government and other governments and proved that key people in the CIA, the director, for example, of the CIA, the president, key people at the Pentagon, the head of the Defense Intelligence Agency, the head of intelligence for the Joint Staff, the head of the Ministry of Defense in Great Britain, on and on. And this was not through conspiracy theory. This was me meeting with these folks and learning that they had personally been denied access to these projects. Therefore, those projects are unconstitutional and illegal. They're rogue. So since they have chosen to opt out of the legal and constitutional system, all national security oaths and agreements, whether it's with a corporation or an agency such as the CIA or National Security Agency, NSA, or the Pentagon or any division of the Pentagon, or any other government agency are null and void. This assessment was sent to the heads of every agency in the United States government in late 1997. And we will show you this document. And it went return receipt requested. In other words, we have proof that it was received. And the way this was done is in the military, there's something called unless otherwise directed, UNOD. You know, military guys, just like medical guys like myself, love acronyms. But UNOD means unless otherwise directed. So the way this letter was formatted under the advice of a very uh, experienced military analyst was that we sent this assessment that I have just shared to the key agencies in the United States government and said that unless otherwise directed, we are going to assume that this assessment is correct, the projects are illegal, and all personnel, documents, and materiel, meaning extraterrestrial or free energy devices, uh, biological sample, samples of extraterrestrial life forms, are liberated. They're free to be disclosed because the projects that are managing this endeavor are themselves illegal enterprises that are unconstitutional. 
from 1997 until now, which is April 2016, 19 years almost, there has not been a single agency or person, privately or publicly, to contradict that assessment. And therefore, all of you who are listening, who work at Pahoot Mesa, so-called Area 51, Dugway Proving Grounds, Edwards Air Force Base, Lockheed Skunk Works in the Cube, Pine Gap Facility in Australia, et cetera and so on, you are not required to go along with any secrecy oaths that you have signed. I am asking all of you to contact me at witnesses at seriousdisclosure.com. We'll put that up on the screen. Witnesses at seriousdisclosure.com. And you will be handled with the utmost confidentiality and professionalism. If you have documents or materiel, those can also be handed over. So those of you who have, uh, are witnesses uh, to UFO research projects, zero point energy, gravity control projects, ET technology transfer operations, and so forth. I'd ask for you to contact us uh, as soon as possible. And I also would ask that those of you who have knowledge of the counterintelligence programs that have staged illegal mutilation and abduction projects also contact us. And those of you with knowledge of SDI, the Strategic Defense Initiative, which has been piggybacking within it a operation to target extraterrestrial vehicles as they approach Earth or around the Earth. In addition, civilian victims firsthand who have clear memory or evidence, video or otherwise, of having been abducted or been witness to paramilitary human involvement in military uh, abductions and mutilations that are staged to appear as extraterrestrial, please contact us immediately. Now, those of you with such a claim will need to be able to have some sort of corroboration to prove it, um, unless there's incredibly strong uh, other corroborating witnesses to it. But we know that this is going on. And we know from sources inside the covert, unacknowledged special access projects that these plans are in place to hoax a threat from outer space. Those of you who know of the plans or who have been involved in the tactical operations dealing with this hoaxing need to contact us as we wish also to expose those operations so that the public is not deceived again or can be, or as the WHO said, we won't be fooled again into another disastrous conflict, which this time they were trying to create an interplanetary conflict. So we want people who, with knowledge of that from either in the civilian sector who have been victims of these events or people who have been operationally involved, of whom I have interviewed about a dozen, but so far they have not been willing to go on camera. We need these folks to go on camera and with evidence because this is very important. If not, we will not include it in the film. We have to have all of this nailed down to dispositive proof. So we're asking for cooperation on those uh, areas. Also, people who may be in the civilian sector who have inherited from family government documents, parts of UFO craft, if we know these exist, uh, or other extraterrestrial artifacts or evidence, please contact us. Uh, people who are in current projects who have this sort of evidence also can contact us. Or if you are retired, it was expressed to me last night by a CIA uh, figure, very prominent, who is retired that he's afraid that his retirement package benefits would be at risk. It is not at risk because you are not going to be punished for exposing programs that have been run illegally because, and we can prove in a court of law that they are illegal. And since we can prove this, 
what we have found with everyone who has come forward from the 1990s until now have been left alone. Every single man and woman who came forward and has come forward has been completely left alone. They have not been threatened. They have not lost pensions. They have not had any repercussions at all because we did this unless otherwise directed strategy and it has worked. So I would encourage you to find the courage to do the right thing and step forward on behalf of humanity and certainly on behalf of the people of the United States if you're in America or the people of whatever country you are in. And believe me, these programs extend around the world. It's not just the United States.